This video will be a part two of my video titled the power of silence. I leaned into the concept of holding silence because, as a recovering, anxiously attached person, I realized that in the silence was where a lot of my paranoia started to arise, especially in the relationship avenue of my life. Something about it would feel so close to abandonment, or maybe it was the things I told myself in the silence and the deep self-loathing that I had at the time that made silence and my alone time an unsafe place. If you are someone that has had an on-the-rocks familial, platonic, romantic, and self-relationship, I hope this video allows you to truly see yourself and maybe the situations in your past in more light to guide you on your journey. And I hope you receive this message with an open heart and mind. So let me start with a disclaimer. I, in no way, shape, or form, am an expert on relationships, okay? Nor do I subscribe to being a creator that shares a lot of think pieces on relationship dynamics. There's just enough of that out there. I do, however, think relationships are great vehicles for transformation. I see relationships in all aspects as an opportunity for growth. So I don't put one type of relationship over the other, especially not the relationship that you have with yourself. This video will be about ways we can use silence as a tool for our betterment in relationship with others as well as ourselves. Because I do feel like the ways that we regulate ourselves in the silence is most important for our transformation. So without further ado, welcome to The Raw and Half Podcast where we get real and then some. I'm your host Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to meet our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to tell you is that silence is not a punishment. I have a history of experiencing people in my life use silence as a way to punish me, or at least that's what I thought or what it feels like to me. That's just how much silence triggered me and made me feel insecure. Because silence felt too close to abandonment, and when a person is taking the time to be with themselves or be alone in a healthy way that suits them, I saw it as a way of them using my fear of abandonment against me. And do you hear how both could potentially be true? One person taking the time to give themselves reprieve from a misunderstanding or an argument could also feel and look like being left and abandoned. But one is an outside person's physical boundary that needs to be respected, and the other is my own emotional trigger that left unchecked became a boundary that can easily be crossed because it is unrealistic. And I had to pop that bubble for myself. Although I felt powerless and I felt this fear of being alone, that fear made me want to seek control and control others in ways that I wasn't able to identify. I have encountered many people who choose silence so easily and my ego cannot fathom it. My ego instantly perceives it as their inability to communicate what they need or how they're truly feeling. And I see this act of silence as a child holding their breath, waiting in protest for their needs to be met. And it always wakes up a part of me that just wants to say and do and serve and fight and stand up for when it's really not needed. My ego had it all figured out and it was always wrong. But because I was making the most noise, not really hearing anyone else because they chose not to speak, I didn't see it as important or as valid as the words I said or standing up for myself or my emotions and the way that I felt. Because in my mind, if you don't say what you want or what you need, how can you expect to receive it. As simple as this is, 
it's too black and white to ever really make sense. And so because I just kept doing and saying and serving and working tirelessly to meet their unset needs, they ended up collecting an abundance of things they never wanted, and I was then left depleted doing work I should never have had to do. Is me forcing noise in spaces where there just should not be an act of wanting to control someone else? And if you feel like you're always having to make them feel at peace to keep the peace in your own life, you're being controlled. But if you're feeling like you are only at peace if people are acting and saying and operating at your pace, you're also controlling. And that was something that I had to realize. And silence, no one has control over it. It is its own thing. And because I wanted so much control, I thought speaking into it gave me more power. I thought speaking into it gave me more stability, but all it did was highlight my insecurities. Hmm. I think we have to overall change our relationship in our hearts and in our minds with silence and release our fears really of all that it holds so that we can receive from it, not feel abandoned by it. So what do we do? We use the silence as a way of pouring into ourselves. Instead of waiting around for this person to come back, call back, or respond, instead of waiting for the job opportunity or the experience of a lifetime, be so present in the silence and whatever's going on in your life right now and act on something that can be beneficial to you. Start a YouTube channel, start a podcast. Sometimes I like to go out on my balcony and get some sun. I'll go and get myself something from my favorite restaurant. I'll do a body care routine or something that makes me feel vibrant. Because life didn't stop in the silence or in this waiting season. And instead of allowing yourself to be frozen in time because of this silence that is so unknown, just live. And maybe take it as an opportunity to be of service to someone in your community, but most importantly, be of service to yourself. Take people as they are and hold them to the standards they set upon themselves, not the ones that you set upon them. In silence, there's acceptance. I believe that if we honor silence in our lives enough to stay present in it, it will show us exactly who we have in our lives, the gifts and the liabilities. If I'm in a relationship with a person who abandons the responsibilities of the relationship in a real way, not by my emotional triggers, by never communicating and stonewalling, by completely undermining me, if they never show up in the relationship as a protector or a collaborator, if they're only a witness to my struggle and silently in the corner watching me struggle, if a person is so easily able to disappear in the silence of my life, what about that makes them a good investment of time in my life? If through time spent with a particular person and they have abandoned you in a real way or has already set the bar low, what gives you confidence that in larger chapters of your life, like marriage or parenthood and deeper responsibilities, they won't abandon what you both produce in the same way? And this is something that scares me. This is why abandonment is very scary for me and why I don't like silence in relationships because I don't know how easy it is for a person to run and walk away. It's like I know how easy it is because I've experienced it through the fatherhood that I had, but because I so desperately want to catch it before another child suffers from that type of experience, I want to make sure that I'm communicating as much as I can. Let's talk about it. Let's let's figure it out. You know, and you're either going to be with someone that appreciates that or feels like it's unnecessary. I think for a very long time, the bar has been set low for men, in my experience, 
because I don't really see them taking many things seriously. For a large part of my life, I've seen a lot of men be simple and embrace incompetence. To hold on to a slice of their childhood, maybe, or like their childlike nature. And because of that, I think most men are entirely unserious. And that's just me being black or white. It's not the right way to think, but sometimes you just get so fed up, you just kind of put things into a category, leave it alone, and do whatever you do. So I have naturally not taken them seriously for a very long time and when they show up in unserious ways as a woman i tell myself the incompetence is intentional they want you to feel like you can't depend on them because they are insecure about responsibilities what about that is attractive to you and i just kind of let it go And it's forced me to become a person that when I speak of my future, I don't invest in the fairy tale of including partnership because that has never been a serious life goal for me. I want to fulfill my mission and my purpose. And a lot of men are uncomfortable by that because they don't see how it benefits them. I know for a fact that I can't serve two gods. So... That's why I can't really dabble in obsessive relationship culture things on social media because it all sounds like doing things so that this one person can choose you and you can be of service to this thing, this person that God brought you here to be with. And like all of that can be true, right? But I am really trying to serve this one God right right now and I can't waste really any energy trying to take on multiple jobs right now like if when I'm ready I'll be ready but for right now all I kind of want to focus on is developing myself there's just different types of people that are having different types of conversations the conversations that I want to have are a little bit deeper I think than just the egoic relationship dynamics of you do for me I do for you we love each other for the things that we do for one another and it's uh, I I don't have the experience to speak on relationships in that way I will say though something that has really served me as in served me by the way that it has challenged my mind and my natural instinct to be anxiously attached is the let them theory. It has rang true since I've heard it and I am struggling with it sometimes. Sometimes I'm good at it, sometimes I'm not, but it always serves me to my higher good when I'm actually keeping it at the forefront of my mind. When I am taking a step outside of just letting a person be them and I create noise for the other person instead of just letting them, in a way, I'm creating a narrative that makes sense in my mind that can be 100% false in the reality of what it is. Why do I feel like I need to define and make labels for everything around me if I just allow them to be who they are and I be who I am? The laws of life will naturally either separate us or bring us closer together. And when I was in a season of resisting silence or resisting the abandonment, I was forcing an unnatural flow. I never was where I belonged if I had to talk myself through it all. Because I was missing a feeling, or there was a feeling, but because it wasn't the fairy tale goodness that I wanted to feel, I was always trying to convince myself that it was something other than that. And your mind can easily convince your heart with words that what you're witnessing is something that you want, all because of the desire that you have for it saying like oh yeah like you know he really loves me he just doesn't talk to me and we don't hang out and we kind of like to not really do anything with one another or no she actually wants to build a connection and a friendship when she tries to belittle me in front of men 
to get attention. It's just who she is. No, like if we really trusted the silent feeling in our heart, we would save ourselves a lot of breath, you know? But I guess, you know, when we walk into these scenarios where we're not listening to our hearts, when we're not listening to the silent knowing of our truth, it grants us and pays us by experience so we can be easily able to express our wisdom and share these stories like I'm sharing with you. I want to get right to the needle point with you. You're saying the silent part out loud. When I became an adult... And I had the freedom to speak up for myself. I did it. I used my voice. I made a promise to myself that no one was going to bring me back to a depression or sadness that I had already grown from. Unfortunately, the biggest downfall in that was that I was so quick to save myself from some future self-betrayal that I acted on things that weren't happening and it hurt people in return for situations in my past that have left me feeling powerless in my body in order to rebuild the trust within myself again and act on my own behalf I had to do things that look like I had a lack of trust in the people around me because that was all I kind of knew how to do to protect myself or to really love myself For example, when you're adopting a dog from a shelter, sometimes they bring with them the trauma of their last experience. So in their behavior, they are on guard. They have different boundaries. And they carry a lot of information and remembrance. And that caregiver is either patient and working through the trauma with them to show them love in new ways because they actually deserve to experience love on this earth. Or the caregiver brings it back to the shelter, creating more blows to the spirit and adding on to the pile of mistrust. And just like those adoptive dogs, They're only acting on instinct like we do when we try to protect ourselves, when we speak up, when we say things, you know, when we feel like we're doing something that is most just for us. Sometimes when you advocate and when you speak up for yourself, it's not in the most perfect and graceful way. Sometimes we do it in the pain and we say the quiet things out loud. It doesn't mean that they didn't need to be said. It just meant that maybe it needs to be in the presence of someone that could really carry the weight of it all. The topic of silence is just so deep-rooted to me because every scenario is complex. Everyone has their own different way of expressing themselves. One should always speak up and stand up for themselves for serious and dangerous matters. But there are also ways to operate in silence so that you are safe and in the justice that you actually seek. Sometimes wanting to talk and create dialogue and noise through a person's repeated cycle of abuse to maybe the abuser, it will feel pointless because you run the risk of going through it again. Sometimes you just need to plan a departure in silence and move on with your life and even when you move on it doesn't mean that you have to completely do it in silence there's a lot of people that you can talk to if you need resources there's people that you can share your experiences with that are actually like conducive for your healing sometimes in our wanting to express and liberate ourselves we do it in the presence of people who just can't carry it and that's fine and that's okay and we can't be disappointed when that happens we just have to realize that they're letting us be who we are we have to let them be who they are and there are better people to talk to about the things that we need and maybe not everyone should know the inner dwellings of your spirit you are so precious and you're so sacred and you should keep things with yourself sometimes staying silent saves you from misunderstandings that waste so much energy and time 
that it's not even worth it in the end. So what did I learn about silence in regards to my relationships? I think that I don't necessarily have to talk through everything. I love speaking and it's honestly why I started a YouTube channel because I just have to talk. I don't know if you can tell, I just have to let it out. And when you're in relationships, it's not something that is healthy as much as you assume. Like you would think that communication is the best thing, but sometimes you can over communicate and you can sabotage a lot of things. And I think that's why it's hard for people like me to find partnership because you, it, it gets to be overwhelming. I think I want to focus more on silence so that I can actually feel something, feel if something is real. I think a lot of the times when I was talking, I was trying to convince myself of feelings that didn't really exist. And I wasted a lot of my youth in relationships that I had to talk myself up in or talk myself through because the pit of my chest knew it didn't feel right, but because it was something in front of me and it was an abandonment, I just assumed that this is what it's supposed to feel. I think deep down we all know that when something is real and it's authentic, it's not really, it's nothing to really be explained. You know, they, the, the saying, what's real doesn't have to be explained. I know that's like a hood ass terminology, but you know what I'm saying? It still rings true. I think from here on, because of this bubble burst that I've experienced in this journey, talking through silence and how really triggering it's been for me, I think outside of doing YouTube, because that's my thing, I'm gonna I'm a talk to y'all, but I really wanna focus on what the silence is telling me so that I can actually move in the direction with what feels good with my heart. My heart isn't speaking, but it's speaking if I'm silent enough to listen and I have to stop overshadowing what my heart is telling me with my brain with my mind because as you can tell it can it can really talk me into some stuff so yeah i think that's it for now thank you so much for making it to this far in the video i love you all so much thank you for liking commenting and subscribing thank you for sharing with your friends and the people that you care about i hope that what i said today felt something to you or resonated with you in any way if so leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri and I hope to see you on my next one. Bye.